Welcome to our Stronghold Iron 8-step video installation series. Today we tackle step number 3, marking your layout. Hey everyone, Jason from Iron Fence Shop. In step 2 we went over how to take your order confirmation and calculate both your fence post and gate post spacing. In step 3 of our Stronghold Iron video installation series, we're going to go over marking your layout in preparation for starting to dig your post holes. Today's video is going to break down into two parts. Part 1, running a string line. Part 2, marking your post holes. Part 1 is running a string line. The purpose of a string line is to make sure all your posts remain in a straight line as you dig your post holes and set the posts in concrete. The same principle applies if you're using our surface mount flange posts on a slab as well. However, you could also use a chalk line on your slab surface or wall top if you prefer that. The string line is going to give you a reference point to keep your fence posts straight and in line with each other. That way when you go back to hang the fence panels you have a nice straight run of posts and not ones that are staggered or out of line with each other. If you've never run a string line before, I recommend typing run a string line for fence posts in YouTube here, and there are several more in-depth videos specifically about that topic that can walk you through some tips and techniques needed. However, let's go over some basics. There are four items we will need to run your string line. These supplies should have been purchased or gathered up back in step one. They are one, rebar or wood stakes, two, your string line, three, a hammer, and four, your layout sketch or fence plan. What we are looking to do is hammer your rebar or stakes in the ground and tie the string around them like my little prop here to give us an outline of your fence project. Using your layout sketch or fence plan, you'll want to start with an end or corner. Go around your layout and stake each run out. You will then wrap the string around your stake or rebar and pull it taut. For longer runs, you may need to put several stakes throughout the run and wrap the string as you go. When running your string line, keep in mind that the string line should be the outside edge of your posts and not the center of the posts. Let's take our little prop here to illustrate what I mean. Let's say this circle is our post hole and this is our fence post. You want to orient the string line so that when you dig the post hole and drop the post in the middle of it, the outside face of the post is touching the string like this. For corners and ends, have the rebar or stakes be a foot or more outside the fence line like this. This will ensure that you still have the string line as a guide, but keep the rebar or stakes out of your way when you go to dig the post hole on any corners or ends of your fence runs. With your entire layout marked by the string line, we can now roll into part two, marking your post holes. Now that your fence runs are noted with the string line, it's time to use your calculations from step two for your post hole spacing so we can mark where your post holes will be dug. It's best to start with your gates on an end or on a corner and mark outwards down the fence line from there. If you're installing your posts in ground in concrete, you'll want to use a marking spray paint like this one. They're typically very bright colored and have a special nozzle for using the can in an inverted position. If you're installing surface mount flange posts on a slab or wall, you can mark your on-center post placement with common sidewalk chalk or some type of marker. Using your on-center post hole calculations from step two, mark the center of where your post holes will be dug throughout the layout. With your marking spray paint, spray a very visible eight to 12 inch diameter spot out from the on-center mark so it's easily seen. If you're chalking a slab or wall top, you can put an X or a large spot to note the on-center post placement. Don't forget, you want the post hole marked in relation to the string line so that the outside face of your post will rest against the string. Your post hole mark should be partially under the string and not to the outside of it. As you wrap up marking your layout, now may be a good time to make yourself a little layout sketch cheat sheet with details as you work through the remaining install steps. You likely sent us something like this back before you ordered the fence. The layout sketch typically shows the shape of the layout, the individual run measurements, and gate placements. Now that you've marked and finalized your post hole placements, it may be helpful to have a place to note all of your post spacings, cut panels, post steps, and elevation notes as we keep moving forward. Having one central master plan sheet for all of your notes will come in handy along the way. All right, in step three, we did our final bit of preparation running a string line and marking where all our posts are gonna go. In part four, the real work begins as we start digging our post holes. You can click this link to access the eight step install series playlist. You can also visit us here at ironfenshop.com. If you have any other questions, you can shoot us an email at sales at ironfenshop.com or give us a call at 800-261-2729. We look forward to hearing from you.